Hey YouTube. Uh, so where's the viewfinder? I guess it's over there. I don't know. Anyway, um, so I am in the process, total disclosure, the process of attempting to watch Tyler Perry's A Fall From Grace. Um, I don't know if I've made it 30 minutes through the movie yet. I'd say I'm about 15 to 20 minutes. And I just want to say that, um, first of all, I am very proud of Tyler Perry. Um, I'm very happy for his success. I completely understand uh, the people that love him and support his work. And um, I know that he speaks um, to a taste of film and entertainment that is not my cup of tea, but is, um, it's not my cup of tea, but it is a valid form of, of expression. I mean, if we can make Anaconda, and we can make, um, I don't know, I can't think of anything else I'm not really into, but there's all types of movies out there that I am personally not interested in, but they are still valid forms of entertainment that people are interested in. And people, they're usually made by white content creators. And those white content creators are allowed to make, you know, frivolous uh, movies or comedies or romances and, um, or even problematic things that they're allowed to get away with it. And they have an area of, I don't know, how should I put it? They like have an area of the ent entertainment industry that's carved out just for them. And it's like no big deal, right? And so I kind of feel like, when people get on their high horses about Tyler Perry, it's not really fair because sure, he doesn't make stuff that's going to be Oscar nominated, but the black content creators who do make stuff that should be Oscar nominated are not Oscar nominated anyway. And then the white content creators that make, you know, kind of more frivolous or uh, comedic or because, you know, sometimes comedic stuff can be really compelling, but just make more thought provoking, um, less thought provoking uh, things are allowed the leeway to do that. Like Tom Green had an entire career of just acting like an idiot um, on camera and that's how he made his living. So I feel as though, um, I feel as though Tyler Perry has a niche and he has a dedicated um, following and that that following is not wrong for liking Tyler Perry Sorry, I'm out. All of my makeup is um is at work because I usually, well, I was doing my makeup at work last week and then I forgot to bring it home for the weekend. But anyway, Tyler Perry is allowed to do what he does, in my opinion, um, or should be allowed to do his type of work as long as there are Adam Sandlers in the world. So not to say that their work is comparable in substance, but just to say that Adam Sandler is not winning any Oscars and neither is Tyler Perry, right? Not that Oscars really matter because Oscars so white. Anyway, so here's my thing. I'm attempting to watch A Fall From Grace. After I film this, I'm going to go back to attempting to watch it. And this is what my issue is. So for those of you who don't know, I'm an attorney. Um, I am a public defender. Um, and I practice criminal defense work. And I have done that. Um, for anyone who's been in this channel, I started this channel when I was in law school. I graduated from law school in 2010. I was barred in the state of Maryland in 2011, and that's where I've been practicing ever since then. So I've been an attorney since 2010 and a practicing or licensed attorney 
since 2011. Um, and so now we're in 2020. So that's nine years of criminal practice. Oh, nine years of practice for a brief period of time. I did another area of law, workers' compensation. And I also practice criminal law in a private capacity. So when someone hires an attorney um, that just works for themselves, that's what you call a private attorney. And so I was a private attorney for um, like a year. And it wasn't for me. And I did workers' compensation for two years, and that wasn't for me. And I went back to being a public defender. So here's the reason that I take issue with Tyler Perry's uh, portrayal of uh, public defenders. And I take issue with the way um, that he addressed them in the movie A Fall From Grace. So obviously, it is a fictional movie. And I posted on Facebook about my issue with it. And someone was like, look, it's just a fictional movie. And I was like, you know what? You're right. It is just a fictional movie. Um, but um, the frustration that I and a lot of other defense attorneys and public defenders have, even prosecutors with how uh, public defenders are portrayed in the media, is that it does have lasting effects on how, it has real life effects on how people um, interact with their attorneys in real life and um, kind of how uh, the type of decisions that people make when going into either uh, availing themselves of the public defender's office um, or public defender service, whatever state you're in, or neighborhood defender service, or hiring a private attorney. Now, let me just say, as someone, again, who practiced in, in private practice as an attorney, a defense attorney who was hired uh, by, um, by people that were charged with criminal offenses, um, during the... I, as someone who did that, I understand uh, the uh, the importance of the private bar, which is what we call them. People that are uh, uh, private practitioners that, you know, just hang up a shingle and represent people. Those people are very important to the criminal justice system. So this is not me downing those people because that was that was me as well. I was that person as well. This is me just simply saying, look, public defender services are a necessity. Um, they are not perfect, but they are a necessity. They are needed. Um, and um, public defenders do basically what I always call, I'm not a religious person, but I call what public defenders do the Lord's work. And this is why I say that. Um, so... Well, okay, I guess the, the best thing for me to do is to start with contrasting um, the issue that I have with Tyler Perry's portrayal and, and just kind of saying, this is how Tyler Perry portrayed uh, Public Defender. So the first uh, female protagonist that we see in the movie is um, a Public Defender. She's a young Black woman. She eventually says that she is 26 years old. There was a point in time where I was a 26-year-old Public Defender. That time has... Uh, no, I was a 27-year-old public defender. Sorry, I wasn't 26. But that time has, has long passed. I'm no longer of that age. Or was I 26? I don't remember exactly how old I was. But when I started um, as a public defender, I was definitely in my 20s. And um, so we see her in her office, you know, um, in a cubicle. And she is uh, called into the office by a character played by Tyler Perry, who is, I'm assuming, the public defender supervisor, right? And first of all, the way that he talks to her is so disrespectful and gross. And I have worked in three or four different public defender's offices, um, both uh, in the state of Maryland. I also interned at the Legal Aid Society in Queens, which is akin to the public defender's office. This is just going to look a mess because I... Um, yeah, it's just going to look a mess. It just is what it is because this is not my normal makeup. And so it's going to look a mess. So just excuse me. Forgive me for how it's going to end up looking. But anyway, um, she's being called in by her um, her boss, who's played by Tyler Perry. And he's supposed to be like a real hard ass or whatever. Now, you know, bad leadership, that's everywhere. There's nothing you can really do about that. But that has not been my experience in the different public defender's offices that I've worked in. Um... 
I have found at the Legal Aid Society, at the Public Defender Services of uh, Public Defender Office in Maryland, um, anywhere that I have worked where people are doing public interest work, I have found those people to be either the most like hippie, uh, hippy dippy, uh, you know, hold hands, kumbaya type of people, or just like bulldogs for the clients, you know? And I have never had a supervisor in a public defender's office talk to me the way that her supervisor was talking to her. So basically what he was telling her was, uh, all your, you're, you're really good at getting a plea. This lady is guilty. We all know that she's guilty. I'm getting all these calls, um, uh, you know, and I want this case to go away. And so I want you to go in there, work your magic and get this plea done because she wants to plead guilty. All right. So that scene off the bat is like the second scene in the movie. There's spoilers in this, obviously. So if you haven't seen the movie yet and you want to see it, go, go on over to Netflix. It's on Netflix. It's streaming right now. And go watch it. Like, don't watch this, obviously. Go watch that first and then come back here. So anyway, so Tyler Perry is telling... And that's what I'm going to call him, Tyler Perry, because I haven't finished the movie yet. I cannot finish it. It makes me so mad. But I'm going to try. I'm going to finish it so I can be, you know, fair um, or at least so I can finish the story because the story is the story is interesting. But the way that they uh, uh, the way that they portray public defenders is infuriating, you know. Um, and it's stereotypical and it's annoying. So anyway, back on track because, you know, I'm going to go on tangents, guys, because this is not planned or anything like that. I just watched it and today is MLK Day and I don't have work today, so I'm going to sit down and talk to you guys. So anyway, um, so yeah. So Tyler Perry is like, um, I need you to go talk to this lady. We know that she did it. She wants to confess. Um, she's confessed. She wants to plead guilty. And I know that you're really good at getting a plea done. And um, you need to go and just make this work, you know? All right. So first of all, let's talk about these. Uh, this, I keep saying first of all. It's not first of all. It's like 30th of all. But anyway, um, let's talk about how, how Tyler Perry is portraying these public defender, uh, this public defender supervisor, um, basically, you know, overworked, you know, uh, shoddy office. Yes, public defenders are um, overworked in many states, they're underfunded. Uh, but I can tell you one thing that they're not lacking in and that's passion. And I have never had a boss tell me, I need you to just go on in there and plead this person guilty before even meeting with my client, right? Before even meeting with my client, go in there, plead this person guilty. Cause I know that that's what you're good for. I mean, I was flabbergasted and I had to stop uh, the recording, the, the movie and, and take a minute. And then, um, I was talking to a friend of mine who's a prosecutor now, but a former public defender. And he was like, yeah, that's why he stopped watching it because it was so, um, it was so frustrating to him to see that type of portrayal. No supervisor. Okay. So if you've ever needed to use the public defender's office, or if you find yourself in need of a public defender's office, rest assured that no supervisor is ever going to tell their uh their underling or their public defender their associate public defender you need to go ahead and plead this person guilty uh because this person already said that they're guilty and so that's what i need you to do foolishness that would literally never happen and let me tell you why that would never happen because uh despite uh what popular culture may tell us public defenders are attorneys um duly um uh, uh, licensed in their state um, that swear to tell to, to uphold an oath uh, to always put their client interests first to communicate with their clients they are attorneys so they're licensed attorneys in their state so sometimes there's a misconception that public defenders are not licensed attorneys they are um, licensed attorneys and so they have to uphold the same uh, oath and creed that other attorneys have to uphold and the first thing that you have to uphold is number one putting your client first that's like rule number one and so we have rules of ethical responsibility and those rules of eth ethical responsibility um require us uh to um to do basically we work for our clients even though our clients are not paying us or they're only playing paying a nominal fee depending on the state that you're in we have to work for our clients and we have to um, we have to provide them 
with zealous advocacy. Okay, that's what it's called. Zealous advocacy. That's the word I was trying to think of. And so a zealous advocate is never someone who goes into the room saying, well, I heard that you wanted to plead guilty. So let's go ahead and have you plead guilty before I even ask you boo. You know, that's just not right. That's a that's a way to get your license taken away. So there's no supervisor who's going to sit down and say, here, here's a way for me to have your license taken away. You know, this is how I'm going to uh, instruct you so that you can go in there and then lose your license to practice law. I mean, people, human beings are generally self-interested. You didn't go through four years of college, three years of law school, studying the bar, potentially failing the bar and having to take the bar all over again. All of these things, the rigors of becoming an attorney to just go ahead and sell your client out before you even meet them. Right. So there's and a lot of your super all of your supervisors are going to be former trial attorneys themselves. Some of them, if they're in smaller jurisdictions, are still trial attorneys. The last thing that they're going to want is for the people that have their name, um, their own name attached to them. So you're their supervisor. So, you know, if the bus, the buck stops with you, if you're the supervisor and the judge is going to be wondering what the heck is up with this office, if you know, the first thing you do when you go in there is tell this woman, oh, I heard you want to plead guilty. So that that, that whole scene right there was just just super duper bizarre to me. Um, I don't know where that comes from. Um, that, you know, oh, public defenders just want you to plead guilty. Um, all right. So so another thing was the young lady of uh, the attorney meets with her client the client is charged with murder with mur murdering either her husband or her lawyer or her lover i haven't made it there yet i i promise i will try but it's really it's hard for me to watch it's not my favorite um it's not my favorite genre of movie no matter who does it i don't enjoy legal dramas all that much because they're usually inaccurate okay so let's be fair here legal dramas are usually wrong OK, so that's not unique to Tyler Perry. If you are a filmmaker and you don't do any research, you could watch a bunch of films and their portray and TV shows and their portrayals of the legal system and come ac and come back very um, misinformed about what the process is. So the young first of all, oh, <laughs> I put too much. He assigns this young lady um, to represent this woman in a murder and it's clear um that the attorney uh that he assigns the young uh female attorney black female attorney um is inexperienced because her co-worker is like her male co-worker says to her he he put you in there like why would he do that and um you know you don't basically telling her she didn't know what she was doing and she said to her supervisor i don't know what i'm doing i'm not um, well-versed in uh, uh, murder trials, couldn't you give this to one of my other colleagues? And he says, no, because you're good at getting a plea. And so that would also never happen, guys. Like no, um, no uh, supervisor, no public defender's office is gonna send in uh, basically uh, what's akin to a first-year associate. She's, she's, they said she was 26 years old. Um, she appeared to be like a recent graduate of law school. There is absolutely no way in heck a, a brand new attorney is going to be trying first chair on their own, trying a murder case. I mean, that's just not going to happen. It just does not happen. It's it's so ridiculous to me. I have been practicing, like I said, since 2011. It's now 2020. So that's nine years of active practice, almost 10 years of active practice, 10 years of being an attorney. And... um. I have never sat solo on a murder trial, okay? I've had murder cases. I've never sat solo on a murder trial. Right now, I'm second chair, which means that there are there are other there is another attorney in the case who is more senior than I am, who is the first chair. I am second chair on two murder trials right now, okay? Because it is so risky to try a murder case. There's just I, I cannot fathom what where he would get this idea from that you're putting like a, a first year, second or second year attorney 
on a murder case. Now, it looks like it's a small town that he's portraying. And so I will say this. there are In small towns, you are more likely to get a more serious case uh, a lot sooner than you would in a larger jurisdiction. And the reason for that is quite simple. Resources, right? But what you're not going to do is have your supervisor sitting in a crowded desk pushing paper and not sitting first chair on that murder case. He would be first chair on the murder case, not her. I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous. All right. So then the next thing he tells her is, uh, you know, look, you're you're going to you're going to go in there. You're going to plead this lady guilty. She hasn't even spoken to her client yet. That would never happen. You need to speak to your clients first. You can lose your license for doing things without first consulting with your client because your client is your boss as an attorney. Um, as a defense attorney, as a workers' comp attorney, you have to consult with your client first and foremost, and you could lose your license for not having client contact. So the fact that this this uh, supervisor would sit there and say to her, um, oh, you know, just go plead her guilty is just, it's a stereotype. I understand where the stereotype comes from. I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm crazy and like I've never heard the stereotype before, but guys, it really does not play out like this in real life. You know, movies and television shows are one thing and then real life is a totally other thing. And I just really wish that, and again, Tyler Perry is not on his own in this. He's not the only one. Um, I just wish that content creators would be more responsible in how they portray, um, in how they portray the legal system. Um, that they would do a little bit of research and how they portray the legal system. Because then when I interact with my clients, my clients are like, oh, well, you're not going to do anything anyway. You're not going to try this case anyway. Um, so fast. And that that can be uh, hurtful, uh, not like emotionally hurtful, but that can be hurtful to their case. Because now we have to waste time with me explaining to you the process, with me deconditioning you from what you've learned or you may not make the decisions that are in your own best interest because you're like, well, I have a public defender and they don't care anyway. They're saying one thing, but I see how it really plays out. Um, you know, even if they don't realize that they're getting it from television I, or movies, I see how it really plays out. So, you know, whatever. So I don't know. I, okay. So the other thing that I was really, I'm doing everything with my finger because I don't have my brushes or anything. But the, only, the other thing that really concerned me was that, um... So she meets with her client and she gets chastised. I will say this, that was good. She got chastised by her coworker who said, you know, she doesn't know what she's doing. She shouldn't be doing this case. She doesn't have an experience in this area. I, I did like that there was at least a voice pushing back on her. And I realized kind of belatedly that that guy was also a public defender. But I just wish that it was her boss who was telling her to go in there and get him and you can do it and and you can fight for your client instead of just, you know, plead this lady guilty. Um, but anyway, so she goes she goes in there and she meets with her client. And the client is adamant that at first she wants to um, enter a plea, that she wants to just get this case over with, and that all she wants is to be in a prison near her, um, near her son so that her son will be able to see her, right? Okay, good. So... Over time, she does some, I guess, investigation into the case and she starts to think that maybe this woman is innocent and then that makes her change her mind about how she should approach the case even though the client wants to plead guilty. But here's the misconception with that. We don't need to think that our clients are innocent in order for us to fight for them. And a lot of the times our clients have a hard time being candid with us because they are afraid that we're gonna think you're a, you're a criminal. She even says to her husband, uh, the attorney, he's a criminal. They're, uh, all my clients are criminals and thieves and killers. And I just don't want to be an attorney anymore. I don't want to represent these people. These are bad people. And it's like, okay, you know what you need to do is not be an attorney anymore. Because that's not what most of, most of us think. That we're not, we didn't go through three, four years of college, three years of law school, um, internships, fellowships, whatever it is that you did post-grad to then be disillusioned by the fact that, duh, as a criminal attorney, you're going to represent people who have committed criminal offenses. Not everyone is innocent. And that should not matter. Like, it should not matter to you what your client did or did not do in the case. All that matters is your interaction with your client and your ability to have your client um, uh, uh, speak with you candidly so that you can 
uh, represent them effectively. And here, um, she doesn't even interview her client. She just basically tells her client, this is what's going to happen. You're going to plead guilty. And, and so she can't effectively represent this woman. And so by the time that she realizes, oh, this woman may be innocent, that's when she has a change of heart. But in most cases, that would be too late. She's already started uh, uh, plea negotiations with the state. She's already kind of prejudiced her client in a way. And uh, it, it's just crazy to me. So so the the lesson that I want people to take away from this, in addition to, you know, no, we we ethically cannot go into a case saying um, uh, this person is going to plead guilty. Our bosses cannot ethically... Uh, instruct us that this person is going to plead guilty. Like that's not what's going to happen. So that's lesson number one. Lesson number two is um, it should not matter if your client is guilty or innocent. That is literally, and it doesn't matter, you know, to any any attorney worth their, worth their salt, especially a public defender who has seen everything, to any attorney worth their salt, you don't give a damn if your client allegedly committed that offense or not. Like you don't care. You don't care. All that matters is, can the state prove the case? Can the prosecutor, the ASA, the ADA, whatever, can they prove the case? And if they can't prove the case, then you, your client could potentially be found not guilty. Or is there are there mitigating circumstances there that would make it seem as though your client is not guilty? So, I mean, it's just... Oh, it's so disheartening because now people are going to come into the well in addition to this he's not the first one he won't be the last but people this is one of the reasons people are afraid to be honest and forthcoming with their attorneys because they think that we have to believe that you're innocent in order for us to fight for you and that just is not the case will never be the case has never been the case we do not have to uh know of your innocence believe of your innocence in order for us to fight for you because guess what by law, you're presumed to be innocent, right? Default, you're innocent. So that's how you come into my office and that's how you stay until a jury or a judge finds you guilty. And it doesn't matter to me one way or the other whether or not you are or are not innocent. So I'm just really tired of these portrayals of um, public defenders as being nonchalant or non-caring towards their clients because their clients are potentially guilty of the crime. The other thing that was really um, just annoying to me and cliche was um, when uh, basically everyone was saying that this girl, this attorney didn't have any like trial experience. And that was like really getting on my nerves. And here's why it was getting on my nerves. Um, even at 26 years old, even as a first time attorney, um, public defenders try more cases in their states than anyone else. Okay. We try cases all the time. We are always trying cases day in, day out, whether it's the district court, the circuit court, whether it's in front of a jury or a judge. There's no one with more trial experience than a public defender. People that want to become private attorneys or even want to go on and practice serial civil areas of law will first work in public defender's offices to get trial experience. So he was portraying the public defender as being afraid of of going to trial and that just could not be farther from the truth. I mean, I go to trial all day, every day. The reason that the law firm that I worked for hired me was because I liked to take my cases to trial. Because I had always tried cases when I was working in the public defender's office. Because I had more trial experience than many of their more senior attorneys had who had just only practiced civil law. So all I needed to do was learn another area of practice and then apply my trial skills there. There is nothing like the trial skills that you get being in a public defender's office. I mean, absolutely nothing, bar none, okay? I mean, there's just, there's just nothing like it. People will intern at the public defender's office to get trial experience. Um, law firms will send their first year associates to the public defender's office to get trial experience. 
I don't want to hear anybody talking about how public defenders don't try cases. We try cases all day, every day. Another thing was um, um, Tyler Perry's character um, was telling the, the new young attorney who was asking, uh, you know, once she figured out that she thought her client was innocent and then she decided she wanted to fight for her client, which is, you know, again, ridiculousness, but whatever. Um, she wanted to get res resources to get a blood spatter expert, right? To get her own blood spatter expert. And of course, because this is a fictional portrayal of attorneys and public defenders, the first thing her supervisor tells her is, no, we can't do that. We don't have money for that. Um, and so um, we're not going to waste state resources. And this lady is guilty anyway. So none of that. No. All right. B.S. OK, that is total, complete, utter B.S. That would never happen ever. Um, the public defender's office is one of the most highly resourced office as far as obtaining um, experts is concerned. You know who has a hard time getting experts, and I can tell you this from my experience of doing uh, private practice work and from speaking to the private bar in my state, private attorneys. Because guess who has to pay for those experts? You, the client. And a lot of the time after they have to rob, uh, cheat and steal, just figuratively speaking, I'm not being serious, but after they have to pull out all the stops to get that money, right, to pay that private attorney, they usually do not have enough money to hire an expert, when can, which can be upwards of $3,000, depending on what the expert is an expert in. You might be lucky to get one for 1000 you know, sometimes they can't come up with that extra money. You might have to pay for them to come and testify, pay per hour. And guess what? With a state-funded public defender's office, guess who pays for that expert? Your state. The same, you know, uh, a state that has all the resources to do all types of other things has the resources to um, hire an expert. So if you need a blood splatter, spatter expert, although I personally and professionally believe that Blood spatter is crap science, but whatever. Um, but if you need a blood spatter expert, especially one to um, counteract the state's um, own expert, then you, if you're with the public defender's office, you as the client don't have to pay a dime for that. That is going to come automatically. You don't have to pay for that. And all that um, the attorney has to do is put in an application for it, usually with the forensics division of that office. Um, and then boom, you have an expert opinion. I mean, to suggest otherwise is total nonsense. A lot of the times when private attorneys represent someone, um, in other States, like say a private attorney is rep representing someone pro bono or something, they'll try to apply for the same resources that the state public defender's office gets. That's how, um, well-funded, um, the right to have an expert opinion is. So just like you have the right to have an attorney, um, if you're indigent or unable to pay, because everyone has the right to an attorney, and so if you're unable to pay, you have the right to have um, an expert. Um, so so all, you have to, all they have to show is that you, know, you qualify for public defender services, and then you have an expert opinion at your hands that you didn't have to pay for out of your own pocket. Um, okay, so then the other thing that um that the young lady said the the attorney um you know the female the young female attorney was oh all i wanted to do was do this job so that i could pay off uh my student loans and um i don't really want to do this anyway i don't even want to be an attorney well then go trick because that is not <laughs> how most of us feel uh doing this area of work we love our jobs it's really a tough job sure you're gonna have some bad apples in the bunch but they're course corrected for with you know your supervisors who are usually uh the true deal the ones that really really want to be there that's who ends up being a supervisor um and uh your colleagues i am every single day inspired by my colleagues i never feel as though you know i I could ever, I never feel as though I could just comfortably say, 
oh, I don't care about this job because I would be so embarrassed in front of my colleagues who on a daily basis fight tooth and nail for my clients. Um, so, you know, I just find, especially because the attorney that he was portraying is um, black, I just found it really insulting that he uh, portrayed the public defender's office and the public defender's service in that way, um, especially where many black people um, fall below the poverty line. And so they need to make use of the public defender's office. And so it's, I thought it was really irresponsible. Um, I thought it was really sad. I really hated it. Um, I'm gonna have to try to finish the movie because you know, I can't just not finish something that I started. But you know, he needs to do better. I don't know what his process is with researching. I don't know what his process is with writing. I haven't made, I heard there's a court scene, a courtroom scene. I haven't made it to that yet. But whatever his process is, he needs to um, include in that process, speaking to people that are actually in the field that he's trying to portray. Um, you know, I see him doing a lot of movies where there's, um, you know, corporate attorneys and things like that. I don't know how accurate those portrayals are because that I, I don't do corporate law. But it doesn't seem to be very accurate. So I don't think he's coming from a place of like hating public defenders or anything like that. I doubt he's ever needed to use a public defender. Um, but I just wish that he would do more research because it is detrimental to the attorney client relationship when the first thing that your client feels is that I can't trust this person because they just want um, for me to hurry up and plead guilty because their office doesn't have the resources to try my case. We do have the resources to try your case. We try cases on a daily basis. We do have the resources to get you an expert. All of our most public defenders offices across the country are state funded, publicly funded. They have um, the same experts available to them that the police and the prosecutor has available. So there is literally no reason for um, for the general public to be afraid of the public defender's office. Um, we are here as a service to you. Most of us are giving back to the communities that we came from, Most, my, myself included. You know, I know that that's my personal um, motivation for being a public defender is that, you know, I grew up in Queens, New York, and my mother uh, was incarcerated in Rikers Island. And um, I knew that when I went to school, I wanted to become a lawyer because I wanted to help out people like my mom. I wanted to help out people like those in my community. And the last thing I would want to ever do is sell my community out. And I just hate this portrayal of public defenders who are mostly minorities. Where a lot of public defenders, uh, the, the largest concentration of minority attorneys are in public defenders offices. Black attorneys, um, Muslim attorneys, um, um, women attorneys, most uh, public defenders are women. You know, and the last thing that we're trying to do is sell our clients out. Are there bad apples? Absolutely. There's bad apples in every single profession. I, I will never lie and say that there aren't. But I will say that this betrayal of us is is out, overblown, outdated and inaccurate. And I do hope that someday someone will actually do some research on the work of public defenders and in a fictional work do a um do an accurate portrayal of us so that it reaches more people and so that more people less people are afraid um to use public defender services when they have the opportunity to so anyway that's it um thank you guys for watching i know that this is like super rambling and i probably didn't um hit all the points that i wanted to hit but again thank you guys for watching i really appreciate it have a good one bye